僕はシアトルの,あのジフーリーさんのスタジオそれからピルチャック・グラススクールタコマ美術館、えー、2回行きましたで最初に行ったのは67年前ですけれどもその時にシアトルのガラスの作家を育てる学校の環境の素晴らしさとかチフーリースタジオの素晴らしいインスタレーションを見て、えー、すごく感動しました。In Japan, there are many artists and also students who try to be an artist in glass, glass materials. So for all those people, Mr. Deuchu, it's really something like an idol or somebody prove the possibility of glass art. So it's like a movement in the movement of the movement of the movement of the movement of the movement. それであの実際あのものを作品を見せていただいたんですがそれですでにもうその時にはデリーチ・フリーはすごい有名なあのアーティストだ,だったんですねですから、まあ、彼の作品も見たことがありますし本当に自由にあの作品を制作しているっていうそういう姿勢にとても感銘を受けました。There's something common to the Japanese world, like uh, Zen or nature. And so, uh, for us, Chipuri's work is something with which we can get hope to link Japanese and American or European culture together. Floats are probably the biggest forms I've ever made. You know, they get up to about four feet in diameter and they weigh about a hundred pounds. Uh, so it's quite an ordeal to make these. It takes a big crew working together closely to be able to pull these off. You know, the float series came from being with the crew over in Nijima. And the Japanese fishing floats, I always loved them. And then when I got over there, I was inspired to make floats. And we made floats for a week. There's this big current that goes around from Japan over to California and up to Alaska. There's something like 20 million floats in this current as it is. For this exhibition, we had gone over a week earlier with the glass blowers, worked in the Toyoma Glass Institute, worked with uh, their team of glass blowers and our team of glass blowers, and made glass specifically for the installation that uh, Dale was commissioned to do. The だから、豊かな海というのを表現するということからすれば、今回の地区でさんの作品が船であって浮き玉であるっていうのはとっても良いことだなっていうふうに思います。うん。And
またあのこういうあのチフリーがあのこういう素晴らしい空間を作ってくださってそういう中であの刺激を本当にあのいろんな作家であったりとかあの観覧に来られるお客様があのその作品を見る中でまたいろいろこうあの作品を通していろんなことを学べるということは本当に素晴らしいことだと思います。But I think the team they fit together really well. We didn't know what to expect, what the skill sets were, and they were right there. I mean, the first day, you know, the team walked in and was like, "Wow, this is great. They know what they're doing. It's good glass. You know, blowpipe's a blowpipe, and the gather is a gather, and the heat is a heat." So they were right there the whole time. で、えー、アシストしながらでコミュニケーションも取れるしで英語って言っても日常会話的なことなんだけどやっぱりガラスっていう素材が人と人との,この技術も含めてガラスっていう素材が言言葉だけではなく言葉も必要としないぐらいこうコミュニケーションができる。We had a team of six Americans and four or five Japanese students working with the Americans, and we could blow about、um, 15 or 20 at a day. And we then took them over to the boat and the museum. For the last few years, I've been making an installation inside a wooden boat. We like to source the boat from the country that we're working in. So we sourced the boat from Toyama. It was a 25-foot native fishing boat. It's a beautiful boat, and it's unusual. It's an unusual size. It's the longest one we've ever done. You know, the boats that we make the float boats out of. Well, the idea came from Finland. The first blow I participated in it was in Nuutiaari in Finland, 95, and we went over there with very specific ideas. Installations Dale wanted to do, so、uh, we spent a lot of time Dale drawing ideas out and chandeliers over the water. And... So I had a crew of about 30 people, and we worked with the Finns、uh, making my pieces. I had a lot of them stored out by this river, and I was standing by the river. I was looking at the bridge,、uh, and I I was just just felt like throwing one of these big pieces into the into the water. So I did, bingo, and it worked. Nothing broke. I threw another one in, and I had the Finnish teenagers who were helping me get in one of their boats and take another boat with them and go down and pick up the pieces out of the river. Whatever you could grab, you put it in the boat. You know, green glass, blue glass, red glass, just as it got picked up. And then they was like, "Wow!" And、uh, they looked so good in that boat when they brought them back. That eventually I decided to do an installation in a boat. You know, back in the '60s and '70s, I would often make glass and then anneal it overnight, and the next morning take it out and put it in the landscape and in the forest and on the moss. And I love doing these temporary installations. I've always liked working spontaneously like that with the glass. What we did in Toyama was make the floats, and then we would take them over to the museum and fill up the boat. This, you know, installation with the boat wasn't temporary.、Uh, this is a permanent installation. It's probably one of the few times that that I've actually made glass and taken it out and put it into an installation that's permanent. I'm so honored to have my work on view. In this fabulous new building that Kango Kuma designed. So, 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 you had、um, Kengo Kuma, the architect, on one side, you had Chihuly on the other, and our idea was to blend those two together so you could keep the integrity of the Kendo Kuma building 
and also the integrity of the Chihuly installation. So we took that whole floor and worked together between the principals and designed a floor where Dale's work could be highlighted and then the, the building itself, which is Kuma's building, would still have the wonderful architectural features it did. Well, the exhibition starts off with some photographs of me, some didactic information, and then you turn the corner and there are three chandeliers. And from there we go out and have the spears coming out of the logs. The logs were, came from the forest around Toyama. And then it goes from there to the Persian ceiling, a long ceiling, about 25 feet long. While I was in Japan, I heard about a Shinto priest who bought a makia of mine. It's a large single piece, very colorful. And I went to visit the priest, and he had put it under plate glass in the floor of his tea room. And it dawned on me that it'd be interesting if it was reversed so that you would look up through plate glass to a sea of Persian parts. So this Persian ceiling was inspired by the Shinto priest, and it's made up of over a thousand parts. From the ceiling, we go over to the boat with the 125 floats in the boat. The Mili Fiori installation, it's made up of a lot of different parts. It's, it's made up of herons, Persians, floats, icicles, grass, horns, you know, it's made up of all kinds of different series of my work and with, with a lot of different color. It's almost like a cathedral. People walk in and there's a quiet because they realize they're in presence of something very special. In one way it's monumental, very large, but it has the, the, the structure of, of smaller detail so you have to pause and look and enjoy. And it's something to be enjoyed in a contemplative sort of way. Mr. Chipuri, he, he's free, more free than the usual grass artist. So that's, a, that's kind of freedom that stimulate young generation and also Japanese people and also uh, give the passion and uh, proud of being grass artist. So the Thanks to Mayor Mori and the people of Toyama, I hope you enjoy the Glass Art Garden.